let's drill down to how you might use this in the classroom. Um, so certain things, you're thinking about what students would get out of this. Um, a few things as far as learning that they could take with them after they leave Elon. The first two you can kind of put together, critical thinking, analytical skills. Uh, the idea of a curation, you're not just finding or sending people to the first two or three things you find on a web search. The idea is that you're drilling down and you're finding things that people might have missed or people things that have particular um, relevance. So there's critical thinking involved, um, analytical skills. We think of the context. You should think of curation as value added. So it's not just enough for a student to find a link, but students should have to be able to put it in larger context, be able to say why it matters, be able to analyze these things a little bit. Writing in general, right? So obviously a huge push of this university with the QEP. So writing in particular for the web, it depends a little bit how deep you want to go into this, but you could talk about things such as keywords and search engine optimization, or it could be as simple as, are they using good grammar or spelling, right? So you could drill down as far as you want on that part of it. And persistence and time management, especially a couple of the larger assignments I'm gonna talk about where they're doing it basically for an entire semester. Um, some of this is going to have to be self-driven on their part, um, being able to set aside, these don't have to be large in terms of total time, but the thing where they might have to check in on a regular basis and can they manage that throughout a, out a semester. Again, a skill they're going to need when they leave Elon as well. So um, your use of content curation, you might not have all these in every assignment, but some things they can um, learn from doing this type of assignment. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a few examples of how I've learned this. Uh, two examples of how I've used this in classes and a third that I'm working on right now for, uh, for next academic year to give you a sense of how it can be used. And you know, I'm far from the only person to have done this. You can uh, search for content curation, um, education, and find other examples as well. But here are a few that I've used. This is the one I've used the longest. Um, I teach every semester a class on copy editing and publication design. And about three, four years ago, I started doing curation in the class because this is a lot of where uh, the editing function is going. Uh, in the past, where a, an editor of a newspaper was editing things coming from the Associated Press and de determining what went into the paper. Well, online editors now are looking at what's going on um, online and pointing their readers to it. So even though it's not their content, they're pointing to other things, other publications are writing about the subjects that are of interest. So my editing and design class, uh, students the first couple of weeks pick a topic and it's, um, it's a fairly big umbrella. It has to be newsy, doesn't mean it has to be terribly serious, but something that generates new content uh, weekly. And uh, it's their content. They own that topic for the semester and um, they have a floor. They have to find at least two things per week um, that are uh, of interest on the web and then annotate them. Uh, and sometimes students kind of blow this off and don't do so well on it. And sometimes students take it um, beyond even what I thought they would do. Um, this is a student from this past semester who was really into um, fracking and is really concerned about the environmental impact of it. Wanted to do fracking as a curation. I said, this sounds like a really good topic. Um, and she did an exceptional job using keywords and finding information from a wide variety of sources and annotating them. Um, and at the end of the semester, she told me that uh, she had uh, an environmental NGO had found her work on the web and uh, had contacted her. And this started a conversation which by the end of the semester had led to a job. Um, now this is not by far the, uh, uh, not the norm. This is, you shouldn't expect this, but um, it gives you a sense of how this thing can have real world implications and that part of the curation process is that you're being read by others, right? So you're writing for an audience. Um, so again, some students have done exceptional work on the curation and it's led to really good things. And at a minimum, they learn how to sort through all the, um, especially on a, on a topic such as fracking, some of the really information that's sometimes conflicting. They have to work through that, those type of processes that gets to the um, uh, being able to evaluate information area. That's one way I've used it. That's probably the, the biggest project I do. 
Uh, second one uh, is more of a traditional research project. So when I teach media history online, um, instead of writing a paper, I've had them go in, and in this case, I've used the tool Storify. This tool isn't that important. You could do this with WordPress. Um, you could probably do it within Moodle as well. Uh, but the idea is to pick a topic, and then you find uh, information on the web and through traditional research sources, such as journals, etc., to be able to um, uh, tell a story about something that happened to media history. So this student in the screen grab here did a topic on media and war. So the student found YouTube videos. You can see um, on this screen grab, this was a uh, famous Vietnam piece by Morley Safer, uh, where uh, American soldiers burned huts, huts excuse me. Um, you can see below there are links from the museum about war stories. She also used traditional research sources. Storify is a tool that allows you to sort of relatively easily bring together things such as, um, such as Twitter, such as YouTube, but then gives you space to annotate them. And the Storify, that is you're creating a story, hence the term Storify. So it's a little different. It's still a curation, but it's meant to be like one encapsulized story. So again, this student did one on uh, Median War and found a lot of information dating back from the revolution um, through the current conflicts in, in Afghanistan um, and put together a really nice package. Again, Storify is one tool, but if you don't want to spend time, uh, I wouldn't spend a lot of time teaching any of these tools, frankly, because students probably know at least one tool that can do the job. Um, and one other way I'm thinking of working on currently, um, and this could be applied in a number of different ways. I teach a course, advanced course in design and information graphics. So for next academic year, um, I'm planning on using Pinterest. Um, which is basically be able to like a pin board. You, know, you pin up things that you find of interest on a topic. And I'm gonna use it as an inspiration board. So as assign students to find um, you know, on a regular basis, an item or two could be any type of graphic design that they find particularly well done or poorly done in an area. And with Pinterest, it gives you 500 characters to be able to annotate them. And so again, annotation is not just enough to find the stuff. They're going to need to tell me why is this a good example or why is this a crummy example or why was the typography so, so well done in this particular um, area. So for the graphic design class it makes a lot of sense because a lot of things every day are being put up on the web that have good and or bad graphic design. I could also see something like this um, using Pinterest or another tool as a sort of discussion starter. So you could, you know, think of a, a political science class or, um, uh, you know, a class, a literature class where you could find current things about a subject. Um, that's a great discussion starter for class. So the other thing about this is to, um, it's the ability to be able to use it in your face-to-face -face class. So you could take five minutes at the top of class. You know, Sarah had this great example of this page one layout from the Huntsville Times. Sarah, why did you enjoy it? Um, so it allows you to bring that online experience into the classroom and uh, be able to tie some things you're talking about that may be um, you know, theoretical or, or not, not necessarily uh, easy for them to put into real terms. This is one way you might be able to do it, either through images or through um, article stories they find online.